about retailers as um, two different things that to me and to MI9 is uh, really one, uh, the omnichannel concept. And if we want really to follow up and consider the customer to be a unique customer and not, a, and not an e-commerce customer and another day a physical store customer, I will say the most important thing is technology. And the way you can manage uh, fulfillment of item and a customer satisfaction. And there is no way for a retailer to double or triple the level of stock inventory just in order to satisfy the customer because one way you will get a customer satisfied and at the other side you will get a retailer that will be damaging his margin. So the most important thing really is to uh, be able to leverage and get a complete and real-time view of your stock inventory to buy from e-commerce, from, from your uh, website, be delivered in a store or at home is requiring a lot of mechanism and algorithms behind the cottons, as, as I say. In, in, the, in the four or five past years, uh, when we've decided to uh, implement the portfolio and be able to follow up our customers in the omnichannel uh, uh, journey, we talked a lot with our customers and we went through to some other uh, people in the retail place that we believe were uh, really advanced in regards of a customer journey. I will simply notify two of them. One of them, the first one is one of our customer, Nike. And I think that they've made a revolution in their store. They are no longer a, a simple uh, shoes and sport shoes vendor or fashion vendor. They are also creating a very exciting uh, uh, journey for the customer. If you t I take an example, for instance, of you want to uh, fit and test uh, uh, running shoes. What you're going to do is to go uh, at Nike and you're going to have a big, big screen in front of you. You wear the shoes and you will test the shoes in front of uh, a big screen just, just to put you in condition in the big forest, for instance, or in the city. You are selecting the city you want to run you can run in Shanghai, you can run in Dubai, you can run in Paris, and you're going to have your, your street and just imagine yourself in, in that concept. So it means that at the end, the shoes can be or can have still a very high importance, but what is more important is the customer satisfaction and experience behind that. And this is what Nike did and is experimenting today, the customer experience. Then the second choice, uh, to demonstrate this, this move is Apple. And uh, as you know, Apple, uh, they can have a lot of accessories to propose to you, but they have a very limited number of uh, products. And all these products you can find on the web. You can find the uh, iPhone, iPod, iPad, uh, whatever. But in fact, they just uh, imagine to uh, just uh, call the customer back to the store uh, and, and offer him a very nice journey. This uh, journey is based on trained people. So Apple did a great uh, move in training the people. And how many people do we have in the Apple store? Maybe 20, 30, 50 people are ready to offer to you the experience, ready to offer to you and share with you the knowledge. And it comes at the end with a very great customer satisfaction, what we call clientele that I will speak a little bit later. And it comes also to the point that the customer, they want to continue this great experience by subscribing to training programs. You know, my uh, mother-in-law, for instance, is uh, using his iPhone and uh, using a, a desk a station from Apple. And you know, by the way, she's training and trained by Apple for years. Even she doesn't understand so much, and sorry, Mazur in Law, uh, she's going because for the customer experience. That's what is fantastic with these companies. So they don't lose any customer at store level. And for Apple, I can tell you I'm a customer of Apple. I am drive to store, but to purchase. I really believe, and, and this is the company orientation as well, that uh, making a customer happy in a store, in, in a retail chain of events, uh, you can do it only if you know well your customer. And if you want to know well your customer, it's not only a CRM list of topics or information in regards of the customer. 
you have to capture the wishes, the objectives, uh, the preference. You have to uh, also detect when your customer is tagging or talking about your brand uh, on, the, on the Facebook, for instance. And uh, if you like a brand like, uh, I'm gonna say, Kenzo, you click uh, three times on the product on Facebook. And these informations just will move through this, the marketing CRM tool at MI9 portfolio and will move down to the store as a clear information that the customer really likes the product. So the customer never told you anything about in the store about his preference, but you can build uh, a, a profile, a strong profile that will determine the way that you want to approach your customer as well. So this is what we call clienteling. And clienteling is really for the four to five previous year, a very strong, heavy development within our organization. Our R&D spent a lot of time and invested a lot of money in providing one, one of the most fantastic tools that will really uh, describe the customer profile and wishes. If you like a product, I can, and it can even be in the e-commerce at home, or it can even be at the store level. You like a product, but you don't want to buy necessarily this product today. So what you can do is just, you are a sales associate in the store, you click on the product, you just estimate the date that the customer will uh, buy it, and it will refresh this information that uh, we call a task management for the sales associate at the date that you have estimated that the customer will buy it. And this client telling system will be made in a way that all preference or wishes that you can put, uh, uh, let's say, talk or, or talk or tell to the, to the brands will be uh, made by uh, e-commerce or by uh, physical store information. This is improving the revenue per followed or clienteled customer by an average of 25% on the uh, basket. So which means that clearly if you follow up your customer with clienteling, you can estimate that the VIPs relating to a brand will increase by 25% their revenues per year, which is enormous. That's, it, it comes with clienteling, and this is a bit the story that I was telling you. A seamless experience of customer in the retail place is when we can estimate that there is no partition, there is no break in between the e-commerce uh, visit and the physical store visit for a customer. It has to be seamless, it has to be natural. It has to be in favor of the customer, but also in favor of the retailer. The e-commerce is not to push away a customer. It's just an additional tool, or let's say an additional click to get the customer back to store to purchase. And that's uh, something that the customer likes because as, uh, as me, as you, uh, you want to be valued, valued by, by the brand.